Number one, a recipe for one batch of spice mix says combine three teaspoons of mustard seed, five teaspoons of chili powder, and one teaspoon of salt. How many batches are represented by the diagram? Explain or show your reasoning. Well, we needed three teaspoons of mustard seeds, five teaspoons of chili powder, one teaspoon of salt. So that's enough for one batch. Let's take three more teaspoons of mustard seed, five more teaspoons of chili powder, and one more teaspoon of salt. So that gives us enough for another batch. And then finally, let's see what we have left. Three teaspoons of mustard seed, five teaspoons of chili powder, and one teaspoon of salt. So that gives us a total of three batches. And the diagram itself explains the reasoning. Number two, Priya makes chocolate milk by mixing two cups of milk and five tablespoons of cocoa powder. Draw a diagram that clearly represents two batches of her chocolate milk. So when she's making one batch, she needs two cups of milk and five tablespoons of cocoa powder. So two cups of milk. Let's actually represent the cups of milk by drawing two M's and five teaspoons of cocoa powder by drawing five C's two cups of milk and five tablespoons of cocoa powder. But we need to double this batch. So if we were to double the batch, we need two more cups of milk and five more tablespoons of cocoa powder. So we need a four to 10 ratio of milk to cocoa powder. Number three, in a recipe for fizzy grape juice, the ratio of cups of sparkling water to cups of grape juice concentrate is three to one. A. Find two more ratios of cups of sparkling water to cups of juice concentrate that would make a mixture that tastes the same as this recipe. They gave us a three to one ratio. So no matter what we do, we have to keep that same ratio because they want this to taste the same. So let's just double the amounts. We have a six to two because we doubled the serving of sparkling water and we doubled the serving of juice concentrate and let's triple the original amount. So now we have nine cups of sparkling water and three cups of juice concentrate. We found two more ratios, a six to two and a nine to three. B, describe another mixture of sparkling water and grape juice that would taste different than this recipe. Well, remember, they started out with a three to one. So we could change it up. And instead of having three cups of sparkling water, we could only have two cups of sparkling water and one cup of grape juice. That would make it taste differently. And then finally, we could go in the same direction and just have one cup of sparkling water and one cup of grape juice. So here are the two mixtures that would taste different. Number four, write the missing number under each tick mark on the number line. Here's the tick mark here and a tick mark here with a missing number. The numbers that they provided us, 18, 30, and 42, are identifying the distance between these two tick marks and these two tick marks. The difference between 18 and 30 is 12. So when they go from this point to this point, that's 12. And then from 30 to 42, that's 12. So if we were gonna go halfway, halfway from 18 to 30, that would be adding half of 12. What's half of 12? Six. So 18 plus six more would bring us to 24. So this tick mark would be the 24 spot. Halfway between 30 and 42 would be adding half of 12. So what's 30 plus half of 12? 36. So underneath this tick mark, we're gonna need a 36. Number five. At the kennel, there are six dogs for every five cats. The ratio of dogs to cats is six to five. B, the ratio of cats to dogs. Now they want us to put cats first. So there's five cats to six dogs. C, for every six dogs, there are five cats. D, the ratio of cats to dogs, well that's the same as B, is five cats for every six dogs. Number six, Elena has 80 unit cubes. What is the volume of the largest cube she can build with them?
She has 80 cubes and she's going to stack them up in stacks like this. This example has four cubes stacked up on the top and another four cubes stacked up on the bottom for a total of eight cubes. So there's eight cubes here. We know that there's eight. The dimensions are two by two by two. And to find the volume, the volume is base times height times length. So times two times two equals eight. So that's how we found this one. But they're asking us to find the largest cube possible using 80 cubes. This example only used eight cubes. So let's come up with a scenario where we have a base, a height, and a length, and they're all the same. So let's test this one out. Five times five times five. Now that's gonna be more than 80. Five times five is 25 times five. It's gonna be 125. So having side lengths on each face of five would be too much, would be too big. Let's try four. 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 equals 16. And 16 times 4 equals 64. I think that the largest volume is 64 units cubed. Or 64 cubes. 64 cubes is the most that Elena would be able to fit into the volume of a cube. Even though she had 80 cubes, she'd have some left over. Number seven, fill in the blanks to make each equation true. Three times one third. Three times one third equals three over three. Three over three really means three divided by three. And three divided by three is one. Three times one third is really the same thing as three divided by three. So 10 times one tenth is the same thing as 10 divided by 10. So what is 10 divided by 10? It's one. So let's use our imagination and pretend that each of these slices is a fifth. In other words, it takes five of these slices to make one whole. If we were to cut each of these slices in half, then they would change from fifths to tenths. And why is that? Because it takes 10 tenths to make one whole to do it. But what we notice is that 10 divided by 10 equals one and 10 times one tenth equals one. So knowing that, we have here 19 times one nineteenth, and of course that's gonna equal one. And then here we have A. So just like 19 was represented here, 19 is represented as the denominator in this fraction here. It's gonna be the same thing. We have A represented here and A represented as the denominator. Without doing any math, we know that the answer is going to be one as long as a does not equal zero. E, five times what equals one? Five times one fifth equals one. In other words, how many fifths does it take to equal one? You need five fifths to equal one. Five fifths equals one. 17 times what equals one? 17 times one seventeenth equals one. B times what equals 1? B times 1 over B equals 1. If we had one here that said 2 times what equals 1, we know that 2 halves equals 1. 2 halves equals 1, right? When you have 2 halves, you have 1 whole. So 2 halves times a half equals 1. 